I'm Stuart Cameron. Welcome to Friday's Look at Rugby. And after the BT Cup Round 3 last Saturday, it's back to league business tomorrow. But let's briefly go back to last weekend. At the start of the day, we had four teams still in the last 16 from the borders. By the end of the day, they had been cut in half as Melrose and Gala both went out of the competition, losing to Glasgow Hawks and Stirling County, respectively. But there were wins for Hoyk on the road against Edinburgh Ackies and Kelso beat Musselburgh to take their place in the quarter-finals draw. In the Border Shield pool, Hoyk Harlequins beat Earlston and St Boswells took the scalp of Berwick. A big win for them, bearing in mind that Berwick are top of East League 1 at the moment, while Bozzies are top of East League 2, with an unbeaten run in all matches way past the 30 mark. In the rescheduled National League One games, Jed Forrest hammered Hillhead Jordan Hill just 12 points shy of 100 points without conceding a single point themselves, and Peebles got a good home win against Aberdeen Grammar. In today's show, there's a chat with Scottish rugby president Ian Rankin, who I spoke with after the quarter-final draw of the Cup. But let's hear, first of all, from Gala's Grant Somerville. He spoke to me after the Maroons' defeat at home to Stirling last Saturday, which saw the Maroons' dismal spell continue. We've had problems throughout the last few weeks and we've had a lot of injuries, but you know, there's no excuse because the boys on the field are, have got the potential to go and win these games. And um, At the minute, we, what we're doing isn't, isn't working. We need to kind of find plan B. So it's just a hike and Kelsey. So, uh, who are representing the borders so we can put that now to bed effectively but there's some big business to be done in the Premiership and you get another crack at Stirling at Bridge Hall next week Yeah that's a good thing about it I mean it, it is a cup game and we are out of the cup now That's we can move on from that we've got the league to focus on we're still sitting fourth I'm not quite sure how we're there but we've, uh, we've managed to hang on so uh, yeah we're going to look to next week and try and you know pick up the pieces and build back on the league because uh, we keep that fourth spot we're still somehow in between contention at the end of the year. Grant Somerville from Gala. Now, Hoik's player coach Nicky Walker gave us his own thoughts on who he'd like to meet in the next round following their win at Edinburgh Ackies. Uh, I mean, the Scottish Cup's massive to the town. You know, there's I mean, some great times in the town through Hoik winning the Cup, you know, back in 96 and uh, 2002. You know, it's, it's like another common rider in a way, the whole town going up to Murrayfield. So, you know, uh, the, the crowd and the uh, Hoik people really get behind the team in the Cup and it'd be nice to, to get a home tie back at Mansfield. You know, we've not really had many home games of late or we've not got many home games in January neither. So, yeah, it'd be great to get a nice uh, home tie um, for the next round and hopefully a Borders team as well just to pull the crowd and then get that excitement going. So a local derby with Kelso was what he was after and that's exactly what he got except the match is being played at Poinder Park rather than Mansfield Park. Kelso getting a home tie yet again against the Greens. Well I went up to BT Murrayfield to witness the draw for the BT Cup quarter-finals and of course the semi-finals as well. And as well as Kelso playing Hoyk, Stirling will host Borough Muir, Glasgow Hawks will take on Ayr at Old Anna's Land, and in the other tie, it's Holders Heriots against National League Two team, Howe of Fife. Whoever wins the Kelso Hoyt game will get a home tie in the semi final against either Heriots or Howe of Fife. Well, after the draw, I spoke with current president of Scottish Rugby. Ian Rankin. Ian, we've just uh, been witnessing the BT Cup draw for the quarterfinals and the semi-finals. Some tasty ties on there as well. Uh, what's your own reaction to that? Yeah, I think uh, there's always a lot of anticipation. Uh, you know, I know that was going out live on Twitter and uh, the border tie that everybody was hopefully, I think, looking for. Uh, Kelso got Hoyk uh, coming to Poinder Park, and I'm sure they'll be looking forward to that. There's a, another local derby in Glasgow with uh, Hawks and Air. Uh, so you know, th- there's there's some tasty ones out there, and uh, you know, although the league is you know takes over now for the next wee while, uh, the cup still has that bit of magic. You know, the opportunity to to run out at Murrayfield, speak to anybody who's done it. Uh, you know, and it's something they always remember. Uh, some some clubs have made a lot of finals, but you know, it's, there's always that dream that uh, you know you get there, and uh, I'm sure that that'll be the case this season as well. Well, of course, in the past we've seen some big, big crowds, 24,000 uh, way back in the old days. It's slipped a, a lot since then. What's the SRU doing to, to kind of address that situation? The marketing and the, the sales, it was new. The Cup was a new concept way back. You know, over the years, I was involved with Dundee in two Cup finals against Hawks and Borough Muir. And, you know, we're still double figures, still 10,000 uh, there and thereabouts. We need to engage. It's a, it's a festival of rugby. You know, last year it wasn't at Murrayfield for good reasons because we were putting in this fantastic pitch. It'll be back at Murrayfield this year. There'll be you know four cup finals. Uh, it's engaging. I think it's selling the, selling the event uh, to the wider community. Uh, when BT were the original sponsors, 
you know, they, there was a lot, they, they got behind it in a big way. And I think that'll happen this year. Uh, and it's something we can look forward to. The, the quality of rugby that's been on show this season, uh, not every game, it's the same with the pro games, <laughs> with international rugby, but the majority of games I've seen uh, have been up on previous seasons. Uh, I think some of the premiership standard has gone up. I watched how beating GHA, absolutely, you know, a, a really clear victory on Saturday. Outstanding game of rugby, you know, and these, these guys are, you know, two levels down. So, you know, the, the game is there. Hopefully, we can we can get the spectators to to buy into that. And you know, we've got a, we've got a pitch out there that uh, every everybody would dream of running onto again. It's uh, very much fit for purpose. And of course, uh, this season it's back to being a knockout cup again, which I think everyone really bought into. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you know we went through the regional, um, the regional cup. Uh, it was probably quite successful in the borders. You know, you've got the, the basis of the, the border league, um, and that's still very strong, oldest league in the world. In the other areas, there seemed to be too big a, a discrepancy between teams. The other teams winning by eighty, ninety points, and. You know, it really didn't. The, the the good teams were obviously you know way ahead of the others, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. Now, talking of formats, of course, the Premiership has changed this uh, this year. It's been controversial, of course. Some people think that a league should be going to the the, the team that that wins at the end of the season mm. all the all the games effectively. Heriot's probably have a great view of that at the moment, and of course, we've been speaking to George Graham uh, early in the season. He's won for that format as well, although obviously he's changed his views just slightly. I think uh, in the last few weeks. It has pros and cons. Yeah, I think when you look at the other leagues in the world that have been doing it, you know they've been doing it down in England for quite a few years now, and it certainly takes it. The playoff games, yes, the team that wins. You know, remember Leicester winning uh, the league, and uh, you know the playoffs they didn't win the league, and they were quite clearly the best team that year. But it comes down; it's like a cup format when it comes to, to the, the playoff games. I think it'll add. I think it's something that'll add to the the brand of the Premiership. Um, Teams who, you know, are maybe not quite there at the moment, it, it keeps them all playing. You know, I think, you know, when we had the British and Irish Cup and everybody was trying to get into the top four, you know, that I thought that brought the, the league on because everybody was fighting right to the death to get into that. And to get into the, to, you know, for the playoffs, you know, to get the chance of, of getting to the, the grand final, you know, it's it, it happens all over and uh, it seems to work. And uh, I, I'm certainly behind it. And I, the guys I've spoken to in the, in the club game, you know, they, they've got that, at the, you know, at the back of their mind that, you know, that it's going to a real crescendo at the at the end of the season. As a president of the SRU, how are you enjoying it? First of all, it's been uh, an unbelievable experience. You know, I said right at the beginning that you know this hadn't really been part of a master plan. Uh, you know, coming from coaching, uh, you know, when clubs approached me and you know asked if I would consider doing it, you know, I think we're getting the club game far higher up. More people are, you know, in Murrayfield. There's a lot more money going into it. There's a recognition without the club game. If we don't have a healthy club game. You know, we don't have a game of rugby in Scotland. That's the basic principle that we're, we're working to. But you know, the opportunities uh, to try and do that, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying. It's a it's a different challenge. I still miss the I miss the changing room. I miss the touchline massively. Um, but you know, there's other challenges for me. And uh, yeah, I think one of the things that's really encouraged me is that going to sometimes the further down you go, you go to small clubs and you can. The, the enthusiasm and the hard work that guys are putting in to get youth rugby, keep it going, keep a senior 15 going, try and get setting 15s out. And you, know, you do, you think, wow, you know, the volunteers that are keeping our game alive, we need to support them. We need to acknowledge how much our game, you know, actually, you know, would depend on all of these people. So, yeah, no, it's, it's been fantastic. I've, I've loved it. I've absolutely loved it. And uh, how much power does the president actually have? <laughs> Great question. Um, influence. I think it's building up an, a relationship with uh, all sorts of people within within the game, within Scotland, getting trust with the executives that we have working here. I think at the moment, S Scottish rugby is blessed with a, a very good executive team um, who, you know, some of the sponsorship deals and some of the things like new pitches and the money that's being put back into the club game. But, you know, my job is to, you know, to help influence that and, uh, you know, help the, the club game develop. But Scotland, what happens out in that big pitch has a massive result on all of the game in Scotland. 
when we did, and I thought we did really well in the autumn series, you know, that had a great effect. You know, the feel-good factor that cascaded down throughout the clubs. Glasgow going pretty well, Edinburgh having a wee run, great great result in, uh, at the weekend, you know, when they turned Glasgow over against against the odds. But seeing our, our pro sides being able to stand shoulder to shoulder with the best of them in Europe, in the domestic league as well as, you know, in Europe, uh, you know, we can be pretty proud of that. And it's, we're in a better place than we've been for quite a while. Six Nations is just coming upon us and... You know, what a challenge that is. So this is your, your one and only year, obviously, because things have changed uh, since the Ian McLaughlin days, I think, yeah. uh, that, that actually happened and came into being. What do you want your legacy to be then after this year? Club Rugby to have earned the respect and the position that it deserves uh, within within the whole of Scottish Rugby. You know, we did go through a period. We, we had a difficult time when the overdraft here was, you know, over £20 million. And there was, you know, people were brought in to sort that out. And they sorted that out, but the club game really did suffer during that era. Um, that was sorted, good job done, and there's a whole change. And the international side has been supported heavily, as the two pro sides have. And it's now the club. The clubs are, you know, the foundation of the game. There was a bit of building from the top down for a while. I think the recognition now, if we don't build the base, if we don't get the, the foundation strong and get the numbers. And I think through you know, the schools and youth programme that we're looking at and the academies, uh, you know, getting young guys coming through, every sport's fighting you know, to get their numbers up. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's the challenge, is to keep people playing the game. Scottish Rugby President Ian Rankin. Well, let's go through the matches tomorrow. The weather forecast predicting high winds, heavy rain, sleet and maybe even snow. So don't be surprised if some of these are scuppered. But here's the list. BT Premiership, Curry against Melrose. Hoyk at home to Glasgow Hawks. Gala away at Stirling County. In National League One, it's Dundee against Kelso. Peebles at home to GHA, Stuart's Melville host Jed Forrest and Selkirk. 14 wins out of 14 will be looking to make it 15, but it's going to be a tough one for them at Myerside against Watsonians. In National League 3, Hoyt YM are away at Murrayfield Wanderers. East League 1, Berwick against Dalkeith, that's a table-topping clash. Dunbar against Hoyk Harlequins. Duns and Langham is the local derby in that one. Hoyk Lindine will face Portobello. In East League 2, Lismore against Earlston. And St Boswell's away at Trinity Ackies. In East League 3, Walkerburn are at Broughton. And Galloway M are at home to Ross High. The featured game on Radio Borders Super Scoreboard Live tomorrow with Keith Clarkson will be Peebles v GHA in National League One. Stuart McFarlane and Dale Clancy, your commentary team there. I'll be at Mansfield Park for Hoyk against Glasgow Hawks, a game which is so important for both teams as they try and get into the Premiership playoff positions at the end of the season. But that's it for your rugby tonight. 